my god like i feel like a new woman after that i knew that it was one of the only things that made me feel better when i was really 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 sick and like today doing it again when i didn't feel good i was like whoa oh my god yes this is like magic hello I'm Kimberly and I went through over 10 years of extreme chronic experiences with diagnosis of Lyme disease and toxic mold among other things and I have fully recovered from those experiences and I'm now sharing my stories. So today I'm going to talk about cold and hot contrast therapy. Um, as you may notice, I uh, do have a cold, so I have something going on right now, which is going to lead into uh, why we're talking about this right now, because I was able to use this today, tonight, um, in my life now to help me through things like this that come up, because being human, we still have things come up in our lives all the time. So contrast therapy, when I um, is a uh, exchange between hot and cold water. So uh, bringing your body into like a sweat from hot water and then bringing in your body into like goosebumps from cold water, um, which allows your vascular system to exercise and um, contract and relax. Um, so it helps with toxin removal. I used contrast therapy during my um, 15 weeks of it's like really intense IV therapy that was, um, it was five days a week of antibiotics, natural and pharmaceutical with, um, vitamin C bags and all these other things. Now, just to preface this, I don't know if any of this treatment helped at all. I only got personally me. I only got worse after this. Um, so that's just my, my story. Um, but just to help um, tell what helped me get through that and what helps with the die off, um, the die off of pathogens in the body, the Herxheim, Herxheimer reaction um, to the treatments that I was receiving. I was having a ton of buildup of toxins in the body and a ton of stuff to constantly be purging. And so one of the things that greatly helped me during this time was the contrast therapy. So this is when I started getting into doing cold therapy and I was doing it with the hot and the cold back and forth. So I was living in Arizona at this time and I would go in from a really, really hot bath um, to where I was like just barely, like barely tolerable to get in hot. And at this time I was heat intolerant. So if it was above 80 degrees outside, I would start to swell and I would start to have, um, I would start to feel like I was going to pass out. I had POTS, so it would um, have like a really severe reaction. However, for whatever reason, I was able to use the hot water to sweat. So because I wasn't able to get into a dry sauna or um, the, just standing outside in the summer in Arizona, um, and I was able to use the water to um, to sweat. So I would either do one of two things. I would get into the bath until my body got extremely hot and then I would go into the pool or I would go into the, the shower in the other room. Um, and then I would rotate back into the, um, into the bathtub. Now this can be done in the shower as well. So you can put on really, really hot water and until you get really hot, really steamy, you feel like you're okay, like, oh, I can't really, like, I, I don't want to be in the heat anymore. Then turn the water all the way to cold and um, until like there's like some goosebumps and you really feel in the cold and then go back and forth. Now, of course, none of this is medical advice. Please like uh, research this yourself, reach out to um, any of your practitioners or anything. If you're curious about any of this, this is just stuff that like tremendously helped me through my journey and um, has been profoundly helpful um, even now today. So um, bringing that story to today, I... It was last Saturday, so just over a week ago. Today is Tuesday. Um, I went surfing for the first time, and it is winter in California, and I was wearing a summer wetsuit with um, neoprene rafting pants over it. So I was not wearing um, the full like winter surfing getup. People were out there with the really thick wetsuits and the head caps and the gloves and the booties and everything like that, and I didn't have any of that. So... I've been doing cold therapy, and this wasn't a test of cold therapy, by the way. This was just, I'm really excited to go surfing. I want to try it. So I go out, and I go surfing, and um, I'm pretty sure that, like, I got mild hypothermia by the end of it. 
also this day I had gotten my period. So my body was low on its energy, low on its nutrients and everything like that and working hard on all of that moon stuff. So um, I had two things happen. I was totally fine. It just took me a little bit longer to warm up and um, took a really long hot shower afterwards and I was totally fine. But I definitely noticed that it drained my energy. Um, and then when I... Um, a few few days later, I noticed like, okay, I think it was, it was Saturday, I think it was Thursday night, I noticed like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of feeling a little bit of something going on. And I'm highly perceptive of my body and any like subtle changes now after going through so many years of extreme experiences and needing to be so attuned to my body. So I ended up... Um, like taking the few remedies and, and going to bed. And then I woke up the next morning and I was like, okay, it's Friday. I'm just going to, I'm not, I don't have to be anywhere today. Um, I'm working from home so I can just do some coconut water fasting. So I coconut water fasted Friday, I coconut water fasted Saturday. Um, and when you, when I do coconut water fasting, if I injure something or if I'm starting to feel sick, because it allows, as long as it makes sense in my life. So like, I didn't have anything active going on where I was going to be burning a lot of calories or moving around a lot. Um, and that way, um, it allows for the energy from my digestion, um, to be put into healing instead of the digestion. So I knew my energy reserves were up enough that I could do a couple days of, water, uh, coconut water fasting. Um, I was listening to my body and seeing where I was at with that. So I did that. And on that, that, that Saturday night, I broke the fast and then I ended up, um, Sunday morning was Christmas Eve and Christmas in that morning I woke up and I was feeling so much better. I was feeling great. And then it was Christmas Eve. We were having a Christmas party and I really, we made like these really awesome cookies and I haven't, I don't eat a lot of sugar. I actually don't crave sugar, but I do love some of these Christmas cookies I grew up with. So, um, we were eating, I, I was eating a bunch of the Christmas cookies and I ended up staying up late that night. And then I woke up Christmas morning and I was like, okay, I can feel it back again. And then as Christmas day went on, I was like, oh yeah, I can feel that. I can feel it coming on. I can feel it coming on. So <laughs> Instead of listening to my body and being like, okay, I know I should just eat really, really clean and just eat some vegetables and don't eat meat and don't eat sugar and don't eat carbs and be super good. I was like, oh, but it's Christmas. I just want to eat the sugar. So I did. And then this was the repercussion. So and then Monday was Christmas. And um, then this morning I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh, like I am sick and I was just so out of it today. <laughs> and I ended up like taking like a three hour nap. And um, <clears throat> and then at the end of the, the night here, I think it's like around like uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock right now, I ended up um, saying, okay, I want to take a bath and I want to do some Epsom salt. But then I was like, no, actually, I'm going to do a hot bath um, and then go into the pool afterwards. And so I did a really hot bath and I started sweating and got my temperature up and I, I don't, by the way, I don't get fevers. So it's very, very rare through everything I've been through for me to get a fever. So me like inducing sweating is always really good, um, for my body. So I, um, went into the hot, started sweating, um, uh, went into the pool, um, was in there for like two to three minutes then went back into the into the hot tub, into the um, hot bath, then into the pool, and back into the tub. So three times in the hot tub and two times into the pool. And oh my God, like I feel like a new woman after that. It's crazy how how profound it is to have this this contrast therapy. Like I knew that it was one of the only things that made me feel better when I was really, really, really sick. And like today doing it again, when I didn't feel good, I was like, whoa, oh my God. Yes, this is like magic. <laughs> so, um, it's something to definitely look into if it's something that you're considering trying. It's also a great way to like ease your way into cold therapy by using the hot and the cold together. So it's not just the 
cold. Um, but there's there's so many aspects to all of this. So um, please talk to somebody about what's going on with you in particular and um, how you're feeling. And I just wanted to share like how much this um, was like, wow, this is like a throwback to like what this used to do for me and how profound it was for me. So I just wanted to share that. And um, let me know below if you have any questions. Also, if you can give this video a like, um, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I'd love to have you here um, and share my story and continue connecting with you. It does really help with the algorithms so people can um, get this video out. We can get this video out to more people who um, might benefit from this. So um, thank you so much for that um, and that energy reception um, of a little give back there. And I really hope that you had a wonderful holiday and I will see you in the next video. Oh, one more thing. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching or any more information about what it is that I do, please go over to my website at KimberlyHarder.com or check me out on Instagram at Kimbers.New.Frequency. All right. Well, that is it. Bye.